Welcome to our presentation on pre-registering NLP research. This work is in collaboration with Chris van der Lee and Emile Kramer. The goal of this presentation is to improve the reproducibility of our work. To this end, Muna Paul et al. published their Manifesto for Reproducible Science, which makes the four recommendations below. The first question of this presentation is, how are we doing in NLP with regards to these uh, recommendations? On the first recommendation, I think we're doing quite well. Recent work is paying more and more atten attention to proper statistics, human evaluation, dataset quality and interpretability. There are also many tutorials on these topics at recent ACL and NACL conferences. On the second point of diversifying peer review, I think we're ahead of the curve. So Munafo et al, for example, recommend uh, preprints, which are already widely adopted in NLP. We also have a very wide range of, range of different venues where people can publish their work. So most work um, gets to see the light of day. At the same time, there are also many discussions on how to improve the peer review process even further. And there are also tutorials uh, at recent ACL events on uh, teaching people how to review a paper. On the third point of adopting reporting guidelines, there's also been quite a bit of work. There's a recent proposal for reproducibility checklists that people fill in when they submit their papers. And also many people include data statements, model cards and data sheets nowadays to document the strengths and weaknesses of their models and the properties of their data sets. And I think the field is already becoming more reflective as well recently by including ethical considerations at the end of their papers. Um, and I don't think we've reached the end of these proposals um, but I think we're doing pretty well here. Then finally for pre-registration, there's almost no discussion and hardly any published pre-registrations in NLP. We found two of them in the whole ACL anthology. So what is pre-registration? Simply put, pre-registration is the practice of specifying what you're going to do and what you expect to find in your study before carrying out the study. So the basic idea is that you pre-register your study by filling in a pre-registration form. So you write down your research question, your hypotheses, the methods, uh, etc. And then the form is either made public immediately or you can keep it private until you decide to publish it. And then pre-registrations are also timestamped as evidence that you pre-registered your study before carrying out the research. So why would you pre-register your work? Well, the, the problem is that we as researchers have a lot of degrees of freedom. Uh, so there are many, many decisions that we can make in how to analyze our data and also how to interpret our data and how to explain our data. And while that does allow us to construct attractive narratives, if you do a lot of exploration this way, there's a good chance that your work just won't reproduce. Uh, that is just all a coincidence. So if you pre-register your work and carry out um, the analyses as planned, there's a bit less chance that is all a coincidence. So what about NLP? What kinds of studies could you pre-register? Pre so we believe that almost all NLP studies could be pre-registered. And we've used the Colink 2018 paper types to sort of uh, do a systematic overview. So for computationally aided linguistic analysis, NLP engineering experiment papers and reprodu reproduction papers, um, we believe you could uh, pre-register the hypotheses, the approach, the sampling procedure, analyses, evaluation, and so on. Then for resource and survey papers, there are usually not really any hypotheses, um, but you could pre-register your uh, your research goals and the purpose for why you're actually carrying out this study, uh, as well as your expectations. So what do you expect to find? This is very interesting in light of the biases that we all have in our work. Uh, and finally, there's the position paper. I don't think we could pre-register a position paper. I don't think that's necessary. But the other ones, I think there's an argument to be made here for pre-registering these kinds of studies. So the next question is, could we go even further than pre-registrations? And I think we can. So there's also this concept of registered reports. 
These are peer-reviewed pre-registrations that guarantee publication if the pre-registration is approved and if the study has been carried out according to plan, or otherwise if you did make some unexpected changes that you at least clearly indicate uh, what changes you made and why you made them so that readers know uh, or are aware of these differences between the actual study and the pre-registration. And this, uh, this has many advantages. So there's, to start with, there's a more constructive reviewing process because if you review a pre-registration, as a reviewer, you can actually make suggestions to improve the proposed study. Now, whereas if you do this after the fact, yeah, authors would just have to redo their ent entire study. So that probably won't work. It's also less hassle to publish upon completion of the study because the methodology has already been approved. And finally, and I think this is the most important point for us as a community, is that it allows for slow science in LP. Once your proposal has been approved, you can take your time to reflect, uh, to sit back and think about what it all means or how you could improve your study or some uh, exploratory analysis um, at the end of your study. And you could put more effort into writing it up because you don't have to worry about being scooped. Now, there are some open questions. Um, and some of which we discuss in our paper. So, for example, we have some proposals for what pre-registration forms could look like. Um, this is still a proposal and we need to work out what kinds of questions really should be uh, in these forms. Then there's the question of which paper type should we consider registered reports? Should there be the possibility of having a registered report for all of these types or just for a subset of them? And finally, could pre-registrations form a separate publication type similar to medical research protocols? Um, so should our um, way of working change that you can actually cite uh, someone's approach even if the results aren't in yet? Uh, and there are many more questions, but we don't have any space to discuss them. So that's it for this very brief overview. If you have any questions, uh, please contact me through, through any of the channels below. Um, and thanks again for listening.